Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I want to talk to you about one of my favorite books of this year, which is a fairy tale retelling. So this is called The Grimoire of Kensington Market, and it's written by Lauren B. Davis. I cannot emphasize just how much I love this retelling for so many reasons, and I'm going to unpack all of those reasons for you today. So. First and foremost, this is a retelling of The Snow Queen, written by Danish storyteller Hans Christian Andersen. You're all very familiar with the story, as the recent Disney movie Frozen was also a retelling of that fairy tale. But this one goes a lot closer to the Hans Christian Andersen tale. On Goodreads, the author says that she was inspired to write this book while grieving for her brother, who had suffered from addiction his whole life and had died by suicide. And this book, or writing this book, was kind of her way to cope with it. And there are so many layers to this novel that make it so wonderful. So the book follows a main character named Maggie, who owns a bookstore called The Grimoire, and it's located in Kensington Market. Before I say anything else, I would like to tell you a little bit about Kensington Market because that's kind of most of its charm. Uh, picturing these places while she describes them and knowing what they look like is very, very useful, and I found that that added very much to its charm. So Kensington Market is a neighborhood in Toronto, my absolute favorite, filled with tiny streets and little markets from vegetables to arts. You can find really quirky things there. Anything from unicorn farts to 24 karat gold ice cream to robots made out of spare mechanical parts to very weird looking treats and people jamming in the street and all kinds of oddities all around and spirituality mixed with anything in between the literary just all kinds of crafts are found there and at any point if you need anything at all you can find it in kensington market this bookstore the grimoire is located in kensington market and the way Davis writes this, she sort of emphasizes that the grimoire is magical in more than one way. It kind of grows and expands and shrinks with stories as they either exist or as they die. And people can only find this bookstore if they're meant to at that time. I reached out to the author on Twitter and asked her, is this bookstore kind of based on any real bookstore in Kensington because I'd like to find it and kind of film parts of it for this video and she said no but it's kind of the atmosphere of that neighborhood that enchanted me to think of it as magical and then I transferred it into the story. Now I can tell you that her research for this novel is impressive. I've recently gotten really into Toronto history, and recently I filmed a video on Cabbage Town, which a lot of you seem to enjoy. And Cabbage Town, or the southern part of Cabbage Town called Regent Park, is used in this novel. And it very much explores that sort of neighborhood community that I, I told you had moved after the gentrification of Old Cabbage Town, and all of the poor people then moved to Regent Park. And she explores that a little bit, and that section is kind of the enchanted forest where it's sort of dark and creepy and a lot of things happen there. As with the fairy tale by Hans Christian Andersen, we follow a young girl in a very complicated relationship with this mysterious ice-cold woman and with her younger brother. So Maggie owns the grimoire, and in this neighborhood, there's a drug called Elysium. And Elysium is like, it's an addiction. Once you have it, it's very hard to come out of it. And Maggie manages to overcome her addiction. But she keeps bumping into this woman named Trebranka, who is an Eastern European woman. And she's very pushy and a little bit aggressive. She is the embodiment of the Snow Queen. And little by little, Maggie receives all of these letters that are written in silver ink. And these letters 
are from her brother who needs her help because he's currently addicted to Elysium. The way she weaves in both Toronto history and geography with magic and fairy tale and all of these elements told so so well. Incredible. Another element that I saw there, and I don't know if this was done on purpose or I just read too much into it, um, there are elements from Peter Pan in here. And maybe because, you know, her little brother never got a chance to grow up, grow up. But um, there are so many lines that are kind of like the little white bird that fell out of its nest, which is so famously Peter Pan. Also Kensington Gardens, of course. And there are many sort of fae-like elements. It feels like a hyper fairy tale. The language is beautiful. You feel fully immersed in this magical world. The dog Badger is also endearing. The author also joked on Goodreads that her tagline for this was, the dog does not die at the end. I can tell you without a doubt that this will definitely make it on my favorite books of the year. Um, and I hope that if you enjoy fairy tale retellings, you will give this a try because it's absolutely wonderful. So that's it. Thank you very much for watching. Please let me know down below if you have read this and let's talk about it. So thank you all very much for watching and I'll see you in my next video.